to bring it up though. Without further ado, welcome uh, Crypto Coffee to the stream. What's up everybody? How's everybody doing? Welcome to the bear market. How's everyone feeling? Thanks for having me on, Max. It's like, welcome to the bear market, GTFO. Like, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, everyone's feeling, man, I don't know. I was going to ask you too. Do you think, because I've seen, at least on, on a lot of my videos and stuff, anytime I talk about Richard or there's a video about Richard or there's something, you know, are you still doubting Richard and stuff like that? People, they just take it as an opportunity to just be like, hmm, I'm going to like take, take a piece of this guy. I'm going to like let everyone know my thoughts and my feelings. Armchair quarterbacks, like man. Armchair quarterbacks that have never coded a single line of code in their life, making up imaginary fan fiction horribles, stuck on Twitter all day long, doom scrolling. Misery loves company. You know, misery really loves company. And so if you want to waste your time and your brain away, just scrolling through Twitter, listening to people that have 10 followers and an anime profile picture tell you about how they know better than Richard Hart when it comes to pulse chain development, you're in for a really bad time. You're going to have a pretty sad life. You're going to have, a, I mean, you really got to manage your mental health in a, in a bear market. And Twitter is, uh, it's like radioactive. You know, you don't, you don't want to stay there for very long. Uh, and it's, and if you do try to make it a place that's positive, that's, that's what I'm trying to move into this positive paradigm, not taking shots at people all day long, uh, getting into Twitter arguments and a random thread of someone you'll never meet. You have to realize that your attention is a finite resource. You know, people think, uh, Money is scarce and time is abundant. It's actually the opposite. You know, time is scarce and money is abundant. Time is the one thing we all have the same amount of. So if you're wasting your time arguing with a nobody, letting him fudge you out of your own bags that you worked hard for, that you believe in, you need to grow a pair, have some conviction and stand by it and not get fudded out by someone that has no idea what the hell they're talking about, whether that's the SEC, whether that's the, uh, you know, the, the, pulse chain thing which i love all the fud smashing that we've had going on you know what i mean I, the more you know about all this stuff the more of a non-issue and a nothing burger it all becomes so i'm sitting here i'm pretty i'm pretty optimistic pretty certain obviously nothing is 100 percent certain right it's could all go to zero tomorrow but my bets are on hex and pulse chain and i've got a lot of conviction behind them i'll tell you guys why i tell you guys all the time you know why i think the way i do but obviously it's up to you to make your own conclusions and I think right now in the bottom of the bear, we're starting to see, we're starting to separate the men from the boys, the people that weren't ready to invest in the first place, that didn't have the long-term mindset. And if it's going to cause you so much anguish where you wake up every night, you know, in, in fear, just if Pulse Chain is the only good thing going in your life is waiting for Pulse Chain and it's going to stress you out every single day, you need to try to get a different hobby or, or something to take your mind off. You know, go to the gym, make sure you're eating right, sleeping right, exercising. Um, those three things in particular, you'll be instantly happier. I guarantee you just try eating, sleeping right and exercising for one day. That's my bear market advice. Um, but yeah, we're really, we're really starting to see right now. It's not fun waiting, but Hey, while we're waiting, we might as well try to defend our bags, stand behind them and, uh, and pump everybody up so that we get excited for the next bull market. For example, today, 30% hex pump. I hope you guys are liking that 30% hex pump. You cannot Ooh, okay. argue with that. But that's such a short term thing as well. You know, it can go down 30 percent in a day and up 30 percent in a day. That's that's crypto for you. So um, this is the game we're playing. It's the most volatile asset in all of human history. But the price you pay for the volatility is the mad gains and the opportunity for life changing wealth. And I think we're all in the right place. So I'm happy to be here with all you guys. Yeah. And whether or not we bottom in crypto or whether we have another leg down or, or whatever it may be, do you think we bottom for a. Uh, I, I don't know. I felt like Richard last year, he came in hot with all the interview. He came to America, you know, that, that whole thing, did all the interviews, pumped everything up. And then it's just like, all right, now, you know, we've been what, six months, four or five, six months later, still waiting on pulse chain. Some changes happening on BSC, all that stuff too. Do you think his stock has, has bottomed? Like, do you think he gets the most, like, do, do you think there's been another time where he's got the most negative comments or was that around maybe the, some of the early hex? Man, people are always going to hate on Richard. People are going to hate on anybody that tries to do anything. Uh, it really just depends where you put your, your attention. And a lot of these people that are mad that Paul Chain is not launching, they weren't around for the two years of development that Hex had to undergo. People were waiting on Hex for two years. Now, I get the difference with Paul Chain is that people sacrifice for it. But if you sacrifice, by definition, that's what you did. You sacrificed your money with no expectation of profit from the work of others. You sacrificed for freedom of speech. And as silly as that is... That's what we're trying to instill in people is you can't expect 
things to be done at a certain time. That's not how software development works. I mean, luckily for Hex, that's not how Hex launched, but people were pretty pissed off at the beginning of Hex too, or, or I should say the prelude to Hex, the two-year runway of development and testing and future projecting. A lot of work has to go into these things to make sure they're done right. Um, and so is Richard getting more hate or less hate? I don't really pay attention to it because haters are going to hate by definition. They're always going to, and you'll never be able to stop them. The last thing you want to ever do is give them any more attention. So I don't pay attention to it and neither should you. Yeah, I, I think I only see it in the comments from time to time. I don't see it on Twitter much. Maybe again, I, I said this the other day, it's like, I don't, maybe I'm not following the right people or I'm, or I'm muting yeah. the right people. One of those, like, I don't see it on Twitter. I, I see it on YouTube a little bit and I see it in the chat sometimes, but like, man, I, don't, I wouldn't even bother reading the comments, right? I mean, when you get to a certain level, right? Like after I passed 10,000 subscribers, I had to stop reading the comments, right? If you want to talk to me, mm -hmm. talk to me on Twitter, Telegram. And if you're positive and cool and even better, if I meet you in real life at a real life meetup, I am much more likely to follow people that I actually know, like, and trust. Whether it's a regular relationship or a parasocial relationship, that means a, a virtual relationship where you feel like you know somebody, but you actually... I've never met in real life. There's a lot of parasocial relationships I have with these people on uh, online. But if you're not adding any value to my life, I am not going to give you my life force energy, my attention, my mind share, the one thing that all trolls feed off of. And it, it's it's very, very simple. And, and with this mentality, it's just life gets so much easier. Life gets so much better. And you can yeah. focus on the mission, which is educating people about what's coming up, which could potentially be you know, the biggest opportunity in crypto since since the spawn of Hex. Is that the hardest thing? I feel like when I'm thinking about these things, when I think about the last bear market and I think about waiting on Hex to launch, as you mentioned, you know, it took almost two years for that to happen. Um, it seems like that was forever ago, but eh, three years, I guess it was in crypto terms forever ago. Yep. But then do you think it's just perspective? Like, like I keep, every time I see, you know, some, some, some crazy comment, I'm just like, if we would fast forward, however long, you know, four five, six months, one year from now, however long it is before things get good or, things are better in some way or pulse chain launches, whatever it is, whatever you get some kind of nugget to, to help get over whatever you're, uh, you know, you're not feeling good about right now, whatever happened, whatever that may be fast forward then and see your future self. And like how none of this is going to matter how, you know, how maybe stupid you're going to feel for saying all the things or, or doubting yeah. this process or doubting that. Is it just about people just can't get perspective? Is that the hardest thing to do right now? Yeah. And that's the hardest thing for people in their, in their personal lives day to day all the time, forever. Everybody in the world is just reflecting their own internal experience back outwards. And so if you're going to be a miserable person, I'm an optimist and I think everybody should be an optimist and you can choose to be, you know, you're not boxed into one category. You can be many different ways and you, you can have many different ways of thinking. So choose healthier thought patterns, just decide to be better. And that's all you have to do and decide what can you do? What's within your control? Um, you know, people like me and you, we get out there, we communicate, we try to educate, start a YouTube channel, whatever it may be, but you got to look at what's inside of your control. The, the speed of the development of pulse chain is not. So what can you do? Try to tell people about what's coming and have some faith that there's a lot of development being done. <clears throat> I have some proof actually KDP shout out to KDP on Twitter. She just proved everybody. Mm -hmm. She just annihilated all the futters claiming there was nothing going on. Like which is absolutely ridiculous, right? You'd think Richard would invest all this time and money just to have nothing going on in the background. Um, but yeah. That all just seems so ludicrous so to me. Like, that just seems like, I don't know. It, I mean, some people are going to be glass half empty no matter what. And the lens in which you see the world is going to, you can, two people can look at the exact same set of facts and reach entirely different conclusions. We see this all the time with Fox News and, and CNN and, the, the dichotomy in which controversy really does sell. But that's also something that Richard dug his heels into and uh, really honed in on is he knows controversy works. And so I think he likes it. You know, he likes the fear. He likes the doubt and the haters because eventually they're going to be proven wrong. <laughs> and he wants that. I told you mm -hmm. so moment more than anything else. More, he wants it more than any kind of financial gain in the world because a guy that's been rich for decades that can afford anything under the sun, like, it gets old. And I'll tell you as a guy that made money from crypto too, like there's only so many things you actually want. <laughs> and then, then it's like, well, what are you mm -hmm. doing things for? And Richard's blatantly obvious. I'm doing it for glory. He says, Absolutely. Um, I, I personally, I want to make other people financially free so that they can also realize that that's not the source of what makes them happy, but it is a great source of power. And then you can use that power for good or for evil. Right. So 
um, it, yeah, it really is a matter of perspective. It really is a matter of the way in which you see things and the internal narrative that you're telling yourself as well. So be careful, guys. I mean, analyze your own thoughts regularly. And I'm not a guru. I'm not perfect. And I need to continue to work on my own mental uh, thought patterns as well. Because if I'm, if I'm getting into habit loops that don't serve me either, I need to discard those and replace those with different thought patterns and different habit loops. Well, so how do you, I'm curious too, how do you do that? Because I see myself every once in a while, I think, you know, not buying into the FUD, but just every once in a while, I'm like, mm, man, like I, you know, I wish something good would happen. And then I always go back to, you know, I know Richard's mission. I, I just posted a blog link there. I wrote like a, almost a year ago about, you know, why he's in it for glory, how he's doing it, you know, starting a tribe, getting everyone involved. You know, he's in it for this particular mission, all that stuff. But once, you know, maybe that's one part we can talk about too. It's once you have the negative thought, you have that, oh, I may, I need to buy, I need to feel that like negative energy from like some resource or whatever. How do you repel that? Like, how do you just be like, no, I know the facts. Like, how do you get back into that? I'm on board mode instead of yeah. I'm just going to start self doubting myself mode. It's, it's kind of a paradox. It's a good question because it is a paradox. The more you focus on getting rid of a negative emotion, the more it's going to come up to the surface and bubble up. Like you can't avoid these things. You need to replace the software. You can't just delete it, you know, because we addict to everything. We're human beings. We addict to money, uh, sex, drugs, uh, whatever it might be. It's rock not and only and, and behavior, yeah, rock and roll. That's my favorite. No, um, we, we just, we need to replace the, the programs with better programs. And so, you know, when, when, I, when I'm getting into these negative thought patterns, um, that don't serve me. I mean, you really just need to, to take a step back, take like reflect on where you're going and ask yourself, what, what do you even enjoy doing? I mean, what are you looking for? I know a lot of people are looking for that dopamine hit or somebody else to tell them that everything is going to be okay. But I mean, you kind of need to, and I hate to sound so pre, I know I'm sounding so preachy right now and I want to get off my state thoughts in a minute, but uh, you know, I think people need to hear it once in a while. It's like, uh, be the change you wish to see in the world. Right. So, so if, if the world's not the way you want it, Rather than trying to forcibly, you know, make it the way you want, just start living by example and, and trying to be the what you want to see in the world. Be the way that you want the world to be. And typically the world will actually reflect that back at you. You know, if you're driving down the street, flipping everybody off, laying on your horn, you know, the chance of something bad happening, yeah. if you're, you know, cruising down the highway being a dick to everybody is really, really bad. I mean, it could be life and death, but. You drive safe, you drive in your lane, you go at the speed limit, you know you're going to get there, you're patient, it doesn't matter if you get there five minutes early, five minutes late, you're taking a deep breath, you're listening to a podcast, you know, that's that's a much safer way to drive. And I think that's kind of just an analogy for how we conduct ourselves on social media and all that stuff. But I was anyway, picturing more of like a hundred acre private property, you got your own road, you're in your Lambo cruising along, like that kind of like, mm, I like that positive energy too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I like that. Um, I think so. I was talking to uh, Furu Finance the other day, and uh, when he was on the stream, and we were bringing up just about the hex price and how the obsession with that, and just everyone's just, oh, it's, it's down and down and down. You all lost, you know, staked. It's been, uh, you know, 95% underwater, all this stuff. But then when you look at the stats, you look at the number of holders, you look at the number of stakers, they go up and all this stuff. Like, why is it? First of all, I mean, outside of trading, I, and I kind of think about it as a, as a house, like, you know, when you buy a house, you don't look at the house price every day. You don't, you don't check to see if the value goes up or down. You know, you wait six months, a year, all this stuff too, or before you're going to sell and you probably had it for a while and it's already yeah. did all the stuff it's going to do. But other than price, like what, I, like, how do you, how do you get away from price with hex? I guess in a bear market, maybe that's the thing. Like how, in a bear market, yeah. how do you get away from looking at the price of Hex every day? Well, it's hard because that's why we're all here, right? And one of the things Hex never beat around the bush on is that we're here to make money. You know, we're here to get financially free. We're here to get rich. We're here to shill and we're here to get rich. And let's not pretend that we're not. A lot of people like to cover up their greed with technical complexity. You know, the more jargon and, you know, words people try to use, the more I'm onto them and the more I'm like, you know, that guy, <laughs> that guy's a greedy asshole. How many real scammers played like the good guys in the last bull market how many actual people that did not have your best interest at heart wanted to be the white knights oh i'm driving a toyota i i donate to all these charities i want to use my billions to to give back i don't trust those people at all. let's all kind of agree that we want to help ourselves first we can help other people but we got to help ourselves first okay so i know crypto is all about price um there's other stuff you can do you can build 
Um, you can build or you can check the price every day, every five minutes. You can just refresh trading view over and over if that's what you want to do. Or you can refresh Twitter over and over and over. But there's a triangle, right? You've got creators at the top 1%. We've got contributors at the top 10%. And then you've got consumers, which are the rest of the 90%. Mm-hmm. Now, all you guys watching, for the most part, are either contributors or creators. You're all great, awesome, amazing people. That's what Hexacons are. I mean, we're, we're a great community and I've never seen anything like it. If you're not making content, if you're not building applications, at least you're in the chat box right now. You're having fun. You're, you're commenting. You're sharing the video. You're onboarding your friends and family. That's all great. You know, you're slapping stickers on stop signs or whatever it is. Um, any little bit helps. I mean, if you want to distract yourself through any mechanism, uh, just try to figure out, you know, if you're sitting around doing nothing, you know, what what's compelling for you to do, right? Let's say, I mean, people like video games, right? What if you just uh, started a Twitch channel, started streaming yourself, playing video games, and then, hey, maybe you, you, you shill Hex on your on your Twitch stream, right? Maybe you're playing League of Legends, but you put Hex.com up in the corner and, you know, you make everything Hex related and you tie that in somehow. I don't know. Uh, any Whatever silly hobby you do, there's a way to actually probably monetize it uh, eventually. And um, even if it's not well, monetizable, I mean, you could just distract yourself. I mean, I for five years, I just, well, for longer, actually, but... When I got serious about investing for about like seven, eight years, I just grinded away at a nine to five job and I went home. I had a pretty mundane life. You know, I went out from time to time. Obviously, I was in my, tw- I mean, I still am in my 20s. So went out, hanging out with friends, going out to the bars on the weekends, you know, just a very average life. Uh, but I was made sure to just stack my paychecks every day, stack it, mm-hmm. stack it, stack it, invest little by little every day. And it's really a slow grind because uh, it's boring. And it's not what people want to hear. People just want to know which what lottery ticket do I press, which lever do I pull, so I get uh you know, the instant jackpot. There, but there's no instant jackpots here, right? It's a get rich yeah. slow scheme, and uh, you can have fun when you're doing it. But that comes down to the perspective thing. It's like find out what motivates you, find out what distracts you. You like playing guitar, you like watching TV. I mean, I'd highly, I would advise against like just consuming you know Netflix all day as a hobby. Again, that goes back to the. If you, if you really think you're being too much of a consumer, I think that's where a lot of the pain of humankind in, in modern society is in this consumption vortex. Like everybody is just sucked into this consumption, you know, wheel that, that it's like a, it's like just the rat race. I mean, that's what they call the rat race. Um, right. And if you can get your way up to at least a contributor or, you know, because when you're a contributor, you feel like you're a part of something and it, it makes life a lot better. Like everyone in the Hex community, my, my life tra- changed drastically, right? I went from just, you know, barely a contributor, like watching from the sidelines. And when I got in and started contributing, my life was instantly way more interesting, way more fun. I met all these crazy cool people. I traveled all around, the, you know, the United States and even the world. And um, eventually, you know, I made a lot of money from it too. And it was great. So... Yeah. Good distractions. Yeah, I, mean, I think that's one of the things like it's key and, and I just, we'll touch on that. So good distractions and then consuming consumption. I think you can consume garbage. You can doom scroll. You can yeah, rat race uh, the, the best you can. But at the same time, I think and Richard talked about this too. You can only consume so much and then you need to produce. Like right. you need to, if you're right. going to get the contributor, like you mentioned, like you need to take what you consumed and make something oh, yeah. out of it. And if you're consuming garbage, you're going to make more garbage. So if you consume good content, if you're in the community, if you're studying, if you're learning in the bear market, if you're, uh, what was the phrase I like to use, um, learn in the bear, retire in the bull, like that kind of thing, yeah. like you're able yeah. to better yourself. Like think about your future self, your future self. You, you don't want them to be like, oh, I wish I would have did that. Or, ah, oh, why'd I waste all that time? You want them to be like, thank you, past self for doing all this stuff, for compounding all these things into something good and great. And, yeah. uh, that, that's not just sitting around. Yeah, I totally agree. Um, And it's not to say don't consume anything. You got to eat food. You got to like, I love watching a good movie every once in a while. Like, you know, the show Black Mirror. That was a great TV show. I love that show. You know, I I, coming back. It's been around. It's so good. Yeah. Season three only had like three episodes, right? Or whatever. Yeah. uh, yeah, I just watched one uh, semi recently called Love, Death and Robots. That's one you can knock out in just an afternoon. It's only it's a bunch of mini episodes, uh, all animated in a different style, all centering around future apocalyptic themes that have to do with love death and robots obviously um so i mean you can you can consume but there comes there's this kind of ratio right you need to consume 
as much, if not less than you're producing. And obviously nobody could produce anything without having consumed at first, right? I mean, I'm just an amalgamation of all of the Joe Rogan podcasts I've ever listened to, all of the, uh, you know, whatever it may be. I'm just a little bit of everybody chirping in my ear. I'm all of the early Richard Hart, you know, live streams, all that information is somewhat up in here. And I'm just kind of putting my own spin on it and, and spewing it back out into the world. So yeah, we do need this this ratio, but you have to monitor what you're consuming. Cause I mean, I think you made a great point, you know, garbage in garbage out. So, uh, yeah. and that, that's a developer term as well. You know, if, the, if things are coded yeah. in, improperly, uh, you're going to get a garbage application. So and lots of technical debt. There you go. Technical debt. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Uh, I think the three, as far as not garbage stuff, the three people that I consume the most content of, uh, overall, uh, would be Richard. Obviously a lot of his older stuff is, you don't, I don't, you don't see me wearing Gucci patches right now. So a lot of his older stuff it has a lot of nuggets in it. Some of his newer stuff too, but a lot of it's just greatest hits. And then uh, Naval, Naval Robbie Kant, uh, great yep. for wisdom, great for great Silicon Valley entrepreneur, all that stuff. And then Alex Hermosi. Uh, I've been Never getting him. Oh yeah, you got to you know watch this guy. He's he's great to sales, great into marketing, uh, just how to. Go from nothing to something. Incredible story. So yeah, Alex Ramosi. He wrote a book called Hundred Million Dollar Offers. I mean, just cool. open your eyes in the world cool. of sales and stuff. I wrote that down. Thanks. Yeah, I'm always. Uh, it's always good to find a new kind of like area of the intellectual dark web, if you will. But uh, yeah, yeah, this guy's great. Hey, I will credit to Jake Sharp. He's the one who got me. He subtly mentioned Alex Ramosi, and I went back and I was clipping the video. I was like, who is this guy? And I googled him. And I watched a couple of videos. I'm like. I'm in now. Here's yeah. the hundreds of hours of content I'm going to consume. So it's Jake great. Sharp's all right. Yeah, that guy's pretty cool. I um, off a random tweet that he made about this book called Reality Transurfing. I, I went and bought the book, and um, mm. it's a big fucking book. But like, I, I was listening to the audio book. It's like 800 pages. So the audio book as wow. well is great, and uh, it's really a, a life changing paradigm in which to see the world. If you're into like physics and math, and and that's your kind of language. Uh, reality Transurfing is like mm. the self-help book for super engineer math science dudes, I would say. Somebody um, mentioned that the other day. I'm going to I'm gonna have to get into it now because I love audiobooks, so that'd be right up my alley on that. Yeah, I think you'd like it. Okay. Reality Transurfing, everyone. Uh, Just want to say what's up to SJ in the chat. She's uh, calling us out for being great minds. Thank you so much. Oh, yes. SJ did appear, and uh, I've been trying to keep up with the chat. A couple questions in here. Yeah. Thank you, SJ. Appreciate it. Always good to see you. And good you've been helping you. her out a lot with the uh, quotes, which is incredible. Um, what I, you guys are doing is, uh, out. yeah, I mean, 365, nine days of anything is, uh, it really takes a toll on you, man. Like, I can't yeah, believe I don't do it by myself. We need, we, need, we need more help on that one, too. Like, I've tried, I popped out, I don't know, probably 10, 20, 25 of them. But yeah, everyone, if you're interested in helping on side live stuff, please help SJ. Uh, just recording a, a quote. That's all you got to do. Go do a selfie uh, recording of a quote, send it to her. Yeah, yeah there you go. That's job. actually a perfect way to, uh, going back to distracting yourself in the bear market, right? If you want to contribute and, and just take five, 10 minutes of your time, you can just film a little video yourself doing one of these SciVive quotes. And uh, for those that don't know, she's doing a, a daily SciVive quote for 369 days, which after like, I think she's at like halfway almost, like 170 days or something. It's, you know, it's not easy. Dude. I, I, I know how that goes too. like trying to be consistent every single day. It's uh, it can be pretty brutal. So um, if you want to help out in a very easy way, just go submit a, a quote or just probably send her a DM. I'm sure she's got like a list of quotes or something. I, I did one one time. Uh, I should probably do more. But uh, yeah, you know, you, you've been doing probably like, you know, I, I, maybe one in every three I see are like from you, you know? Well, it, it's, you know, if you just get into, if you, first of all, if you decide you want to go out and do it, you just, you know, you go somewhere and then you just pick out a bunch of quotes. She has a doc and then you just read them over and over and over. You record them, send it to her. And it's, it's really, you know, it's not hard. It, it's actually harder to go do one. Uh, than it is to do 10, for example, because the one you got to really get up for it, get your place, do it. If you want to, if you're like, oh, I'm going to go out and bust out like 10 or 15 quotes today, then you, yeah. you plan around it. But then, you know, you know, yeah. ROI is really there too. So plus like, I, I'm, I think she'll edit everything for you. So don't worry about having to edit any of the video. Like she'll put right. music on it and all that stuff, but uh, yeah, she'll add makeup yeah, to your I, face. And yeah, yeah. Right. She'll make Maybe. you look a lot better. Uh, she'll put your filter. She'll make your filter hey, the filters, the filters are real. I think she does use filters. Uh, coffee. I've never seen you shred that axe behind you when we get a shred. She says shred sesh. 
Um, look, man, you're probably better at, than than me at guitar, but uh, it sure is fun. It sure is fun. I would like to uh, I'd like to hear you play sometime, Gold Key. Let's see what you got. Uh, Derek Smith, will you get a <laughs> lower back tattoo at a time? So what we were talking about that the other day. Was that you well, calling no. me a tattoo? Dude, so here's the thing. It's like I told everybody, yeah. like, I think uh maybe the second or third month that I started making YouTube videos, that if Hex ever hit a dollar, that I'd get a hex tattoo. And uh, you know, Jerry wants me to get a tramp stamp, apparently. But uh no, I think I'm just gonna get one on my forearm, you know what I mean? Like somewhere right there. And uh I almost thought it was time. Uh, in the last bull market, I was like, holy shit, we're gonna make it to one dollar in a single bull market. I, I couldn't believe my eyes, but uh we were cut short at fifty cents and uh so it seems pretty likely that we're going to do it in the next bull. Uh, to me, that seems conservative, right? So um, tattoo is probably coming in hot in the next bull market. So uh, we're going to document the process as well. Uh, there's a tattoo guy in Indiana who is probably going to end up doing it for me. And um, it's going to be great. It's going to be great. But, you know, I'm not getting it until Hex hits a dollar. I mean, Hex has to earn my my tattoo. You know what I mean? Okay. Yeah. Well, if any wells are out there, any mega wells out there, uh, feel free to uh, ask coffee the question of what dollar amount you need to pump that price to, to get a teardrop bear market hex tattoo, maybe like $5. Would that be the, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just a baby one right there, right there. Isn't there, isn't there a calculator? Um, Golki says he'll get a face tat at 100. Yeah, dude, <laughs> me too, man. If hex goes to a hundred dollars, I'll get a face tattoo as well. Um, yes. What was I saying though? Yeah, uh, calculator to see uh, what to pump the price to to get to that. Yeah, is that a thing, or do you have to I do that so. manually? Yeah. I, I mean, I've heard Richard say it on stream before. Like he'll go up and t t click, 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 and be like, "Oh, it takes you know this much to get hex to that that amount." Is it looking uh, to hex dot com? I had one of those. Maybe. Hang on one second. I'm gonna find this because this could be okay. pretty fun. We could uh, mm -hmm. we could chill right here. So if you guys want to see me get a tattoo. Any whales watching, I'll tell you how many millions of dollars you need to pump the price up. Pay attention, whales. Pay attention. And please share the link to any whales you may know and uh, get them get them on the stream. Yep. Yeah, look into Hex. Hex.com. Oh, it's not loading for me. It's weird. Oh, did they get the pulse tubed? No, they're they still up. I mean, it pops up on Google. Pulse tube is back up too, but remember that one day uh, it was. Yeah, I was super down. disappointed because I think they got scared by the FUD and uh, then they put it back up. Yeah. I think the guy that made that is in the UK anyway, so it's like it yeah. doesn't affect him at all, literally. But uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, so, I think I was talking to him and he said that uh, there was maybe the UK had some new stuff coming out and now there's like this big disclaimer on the Pulse tube website of this is yeah. not financial rise, only yeah. aggregation yeah. of data. Like that. Look, man, ask for forgiveness, not permission. And, uh, you know, you don't 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 waste all your time worrying about whether or not you're if you're going to get in trouble. If you're not doing anything wrong, chances are you're not going to get in trouble. So uh, I wouldn't worry about all that. Great website. Man, look into hex.com. What happened? <clears throat> Let me see. Because that's uh, Gerardo's website, right? Yeah. Hold on. It was to Alex's question, what gives you confidence Hex will come back to all time? New time? Well, I mean, why wouldn't it? I, I would invert that question and be like, what would make Hex not come back to all time highs? Like, what would what would need to happen for that not to happen? Outside of imaginary horribles of DeFi is banned and Meteor and, uh, I don't know, you know, U.S. becomes a communist country and, like, it is designed uh, to appreciate, like, literally. So... It's not designed to not go down 95% apparently, uh, but it is designed, you know, in the right market conditions to, to outperform uh, a lot of other stuff. So I would just, I would think about like, why wouldn't it happen? It's, it's like, that's, that's like something I use too, to think about, you know, uh, if you're, if you're taking a run or you're just out one day and you're like, am I just in a dream? Have I found the best crypto ecosystem? Is this stuff real? Just think about like, why wouldn't it happen? Like, why wouldn't you be able to, get what you want uh, out of out of these types of investments. So when, when you see what happened before, you see what happened with other cryptos and you know what happens when you get in early to this stuff. I'll just invert the question. Yeah. I mean, there's always a million reasons for something not to happen, right? You got to make it happen. Things don't just happen, right? Like they don't just, you don't just wish for it. You got to take actions as well. 
But uh, with everything I see going on right now, I mean, I actually had doubt in the first couple months of Hex. And I, I threw my hands up at one point. I was like, yo, guys, this might not work, but you might as well try because if it does, there's infinite upside and extremely limited downside. And I still feel Asymmetric that Asymmetric risks. Asymmetric risk. And I still feel that way. Although knowing what I know now with the community, with the on-chain metrics, with 100,000 stakers, with you know the price performance we've already had, you know the liquidity, the founder, all the social media metrics going up left and right, like it's just unstoppable. It's an unstoppable force. And you know when Pulse Chain launches, I believe it will. You know nothing is 100%, but I'd give it a 99.9% .9 chance that it will at some point in time. Um, <laughs> I think we're all going to be very very happy. I mean. The uh, the price pump today on rumors that V3 might launch soon, and mm -hmm. I guess the big thing today was actual proof for all the all the little doubting Thomases out there that were like, oh, I don't know if the devs are gonna do anything. Like it's the classic, like, can the devs please do something? You know what I mean? Like that classic meme in crypto. Yeah. Like, the price is down. Can the devs do something? And it's like, all right, bitch. Here's here's the devs doing something <laughs> on fucking uh, GitLab. Here's like actual private posts where you can see like the main developers are committing to GitLab, but it's private because you can't see it because that's how business works. You don't want to just expose all your industry trade secrets. So we shut down and KDP annihilated all the fighters today and the price pumped, I think just on that alone. I mean, I, I think it probably yeah. gave some people peace of mind that their investment is not just in the abyss. You know what I mean? But, uh, you, you can't just be developing something like Pulse Chain out in the open, right? It'd be subject to so much scrutiny, so much unnecessary additional FUD. Can you imagine all the people trying to interpret the code and being like, oh, well, I don't know if it should be done this way, you know, acting like their opinion is legitimate when they've never developed a line of code in their lives. Sure. Um, you know, I'm not qualified to talk on certain trade-offs and design decisions when it comes to technical implementations. And I'll tell you that. I won't just pretend that I will. Like, it's kind of like the unique governance token, right? You know, everyone buys this fake governance token because they think that they're qualified to make decisions in the design of the Uniswap protocol. When in re in reality, there's maybe only less than a thousand people in the world that are qualified to make those decisions. And luckily for us, Uniswap owns 90% of the Uni tokens. So again, there's your centralization, right? Oh my God, but is anybody shitting on Uni? No. For some reason, Uni gets a free pass because even though they own 90% of their token, you know, the, the Uniswap team does. I mean, look it up. And it's fake governance. Yeah. You're not actually, no matter what you vote on with your Uniswap tokens, the founders can always outvote you. And it's going to be the same way with PulseX. And that's good. You don't want amateur hour. You don't want a bunch of plebs fucking <laughs> talking about what they think should be in PulseX or Uniswap or anything for that matter. Yeah. I mean, there's lots of different ways to sort out like who gets to do this. And, and one of the ways to do it is, Hey, are you, do you own enough? Like may, not saying all people who are rich in crypto are non-plebs but at the same time there's like is there a better test than that that you could give someone with a you know type of crypto project and yeah uni is doing fine it's doing the opposite of getting shit on it's, it's yeah uh, the opposite of that but look uni uh didn't pump as hard and probably won't pump as hard again yeah you got to keep that controversy that controversy sells you really got to keep that that mystique of oh why is everybody calling this a scam and then you got to let like you know the the, say, the few people, the, the Illuminati that understand everything, that they feel like they're in on it, right? All of us in Hex, right? We, we're, we're in on it because we know it's not a scam because we actually did the research. That's why we're so excited. But not a lot of people can break down that barrier in their mind. It takes a certain caliber of person to uh, overcome a lot of those narratives that, that just don't make any sense. Like when you read these articles and you're like, is that really true? And then you look it up and it's like, wait, that, that wasn't true at all? Like, Richard can't shut off the yeah. code whenever he wants. Like there's no off switch on this thing. There's no get rich scheme for him. Like, I mean, even if he wanted to dump all the hex, he could at most extract $10 million out of that. Why would somebody that mined 50 Bitcoin blocks in 2011, that was a multimillionaire before Bitcoin, why would he care about 10 million bucks? Probably if probably I has $10 million guys, in the closest closet to him right now. Like it's, yeah. it's he's not, got $10 million. Matter, it's not affecting him. He's got like $10 million of watches, right? Like they don't need... I think these displays of opulence are at least it might be more. Yeah, it probably is more. I mean, we include all the shit that he owns, but these displays of opulence are real life proof of work. It's kind of ironic that he's trying to, to use real life proof of work, you know, proof that he's rich to, to 
show the people that have the eyes to see and, and kind of read between the lines. Hey, I'm, this isn't a scheme for me to make money off you guys. Like I've got all the money in the world. <laughs> Not a single hex has ever been sold. Seems pretty damn obvious. But if you don't want it to be true, you're going to look to the first comment that you see and you're going to say, oh, okay, that's the truth. And you're not going to look any farther. So that's okay. If you don't want to look any farther, then then don't, you know, you're not going to, you're not going to be able to onboard the entire world into Hex. But if, if even 1% of the human population was onboarded into Hex, think about it. We've got 100,000 people right here, right now. That's like 0.0001% of the human population. Imagine if 1% of the human population bought and held Hex, the price would probably be $10,000 a Hex. Literally, it sounds outrageous, but these are yeah, the math works out. The math, the math works out. I mean, I, I kind of made those numbers up, but you can imagine, right? Um, the people don't realize how high it can go. People don't realize how early we, we really still are. Like there's such a small pocket of people that know about Hex right now and you're able to get it at 95% off or whatever. So, you know, the cool. price is capable of going to at least 50 cents, even if you were the most pessimistic bear of all time. And you said, OK, well, the price might never even go past all time highs. Well, even if it only went back to 50 cents, you just 25 X your money, which you can't do anywhere else in any other asset class. Yes, you can do it in crypto, but you can't do it in any other asset class. Is that the paralysis that people go through is kind of like now they're, oh, the price is down. I don't want to buy because it's, you know, it's going to go down further. But when it goes to, you know, 30, 40, 50, and it keeps going up 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 cents. They're like, oh, the price is too high. I'm going to wait till the dip. Is it that paralysis that really just, just like, just neuters people's investments in general? Is that like the 99% of people and the 1% figure out, no, you buy, you buy low, you sell high. And everyone else is like caught in the paralysis of decision-making. Yeah, analysis paralysis is a, is a real thing. Um, you can, a lot of really smart, broke people, a lot, a lot of people that are too smart for their own good. You need to be intelligent, but you also need to be open minded and think critically. And uh, people get off on these channels like Coffeezilla or whatever, you know, these, these just asshole white knight posers that want to call the other coffee. Game. Yeah, which is fine because if people mistake, if they accidentally type in Coffeezilla, then they, they might find me by accident. They might find a better, better way. But uh, why do you think channels like this exist? You know, to a degree, yeah, I think scammers should get ruined. But when you've got a guy that only goes after scammers after the fact, he doesn't actually help any of the victims of the scams. He just says, hey, look at this scam, that that was a scam. And everyone's like, yeah, that was a scam. I would never fall for that. He caters to a certain type of people that want everything to be a scam because they don't want to take any risk for, for their own. And these are people that have probably never achieved anything in their lives that like taking you know, pride and, and solace in the fact that well, they never, they were too scared to try anything, but look at all the people that tried and failed. You know, at least I'm not like them. That's their mentality. It's just a loser mentality. And there's all kinds of, now I do like some of the other channels that are like scamming the scammers where the, you'll see these guys like live on camera, uh, you know, talking to a fake Indian scammer guy and, uh, yeah. you know, end, end up somehow finagling him into giving them money. Those guys are hilarious. Yeah. Those guys are badass. but you've got just these little pricks like Coffeezilla that don't research anything really and they, they just hear kind of word of mouth oh this scam happened that scam happened and then like let's dissect the scam it's like what are you gonna like what are you really doing here you know and maybe yeah. he's right like 50 percent of the time maybe he's right even 80 percent of the time but then he's wrong 20 percent of the time and then it's like well you know you're gonna if if you're putting on this lens of everything is a scam then you're gonna miss every opportunity right so you need to be open-minded enough <clears throat> to let some of these ideas in. I mean, yes, your bullshit radar has to be very good, but you can't just shut your mind off and put your head in the sand. I will say I watched CoffeeZilla on Lex Friedman the other day and really enjoyed the conversation. Very interesting whether whether anyone likes CoffeeZilla or not. But I don't like him. I, right. <laughs> yes. We, yes, I, I can believe that. Um, I, I don't know. I'm kind of lukewarm on him because, and then I went and, you know, he started showing up in my feed. So I watched one he did on Napoleon Hill the author of Thinking Grow Rich and all these other books that are really good resources, like get yourself into like the mode of like, you know, accountability for your own life and being your own man and taking, you know, going and making money and stuff. And it was just like, I watched 15 minutes and I was just thinking, so what? Like nobody, who cares if you actually talk to this person or not? And this thing that happened a hundred years ago, like this book has helped so many people. Why does it matter? Like, like <laughs> in, in this way. Uh, that's, that's a good point, you know? And, and look, when he does expose scammers, like that's great, but like, I, I for, for whatever reason, I don't know why. Maybe it's just my personality. Like, yeah, I'm sure there's some net positive thing that CoffeeZilla does. I don't, I don't even know why we got off on this tangent, but I'm personally just so not the type scams. of person yeah. 
I'm not the type of person that enjoys watching that kind of thing. I'm like, okay, scams happen all the time. Like, I'll think for myself. Thanks. You know, like I, I don't need yeah. like some other guy to do my thing. Like to, to get, like get the bad guys. It's like, I don't know. I don't watch crime shows. Like I don't really obsess over this getting the bad guys thing. And like justice is served. Like I know that justice you don't like drama. Drama doesn't help you get through the day. <laughs> look, man, to, to no. each their own, to each their own. I'm not trying to shit on anyone's hobbies or anything. Hobbies are looking real good right now. Look, man, I uh, I love the mug, by the way. But uh, Thank you. yeah, it's like just uh, mm, so tasty. You know, you're not going to you're not going to see me watching a mm. watching cops or whatever. Like, I, I know that justice is served, you know, appropriately, yeah. hopefully more often than it's not. But um I just don't want to focus my like I don't know. It just seems like a waste of time. At least. It's just, nothing yeah, else like, a waste of time. It's you're like what are you what are you going to do with it? Like it's it's not it, you know, it riches in my head again of like you know what how does it benefit you? Like those type of things. Like like understanding about these scams. Is it going to make you better at detecting scams? And then maybe pass on hex because you thought it was a scam, but actually it uses the tactics of scams, but it's actually a legit product. On yeah, like, yeah. Like how does it make you better watching you know a lot of stuff like that? I think that's that's one of the points you can take away from it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Anyway, I didn't mean to assassinate anyone's uh, personal character there, but uh, I just, you know, we lost it's, it's, one watcher because of that. Kind of <laughs> it's like watching fear porn, right? It's it's like getting obsessed with watching the news. It's fear porn, and you feel like you're somehow more educated because you're watching all the bad things happening in the world. Those bad things are happening whether or not you paid one. attention to them or not. But it's like watching the news and feeling like you learned something. It's like you didn't get anything from that. Like you're yeah. probably going to make worse decisions now, uh, more than likely. <laughs> yeah, Unless you're going like, to walk, out, you're gonna walk outside. You're going to be more scared because you're going to think there's always going to be a shooter around the corner, or like you're going to be scared to let your kid go to school. And which I mean, it, that is very scary, by the way. The, the whole school shooting thing is <laughs> terrifying. So yeah. maybe I won't go there. But if yeah. you're going to live your life in fear, you know, you just you have to be careful with what you're feeding your mind. You'll you'll never take any risk yeah. if uh, there's always a reason that goes back to there's always a reason not to do something. Like there's always, oh look at how many small businesses fail. I, it's too risky for me to start a business. It's like, well, they also don't talk about the the how many small businesses just gave up. Like they failed when they gave up most of the time, or they failed because they had a bad idea or it was the wrong time. But the ones that succeeded for the most part were just persistent, right? So a lot of times, yeah. like even the failed businesses thing, that's just a matter of. Uh, not quitting. But just on the uh, walking around scared part too, it just reminded me like as an RH maximalist, like the one thing that he says that annoys me is like, he talks about America being like, you know, the bad, scary place, all this stuff. And I'm like, I don't understand how that, <clears throat> like you alienating Americans, which are most of your followers, I, I would wager uh, helps anything for that rage marketing. That's the only one that's confusing to me. Like, how does it help you shitting on America and, and like telling a dangerous place when obviously they're safe places and just like anywhere I think else. he's just looking at statistics. Confusing, of, but... He's just, are you talking about Richard? Yeah, yeah. When Richard well, I mean, he's just it. looking at statistics of people that get shot versus people that don't. And yes, you're less likely to die from gun violence. And when you grow up in a place like Miami, you have a different mindset as well, right? That's like, what I'm saying. Just... He like localizes everything to Miami. And I'm like, there's a lot of other places that nice, you know, nicer than uh, Miami, safer than Miami. I'll say. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Hey, I live in Chicago. So, uh, you know, I feel pretty safe here, believe it or not, but I know a lot of people that wouldn't even want to come here. They wouldn't even want to step foot here because, uh, they hear about all the I'll... gang violence and whatnot. Next time we're in person, I'll tell you my Chicago story. I got a great one. I think oh, you'll yeah? resonate with it. It's uh, yeah. I don't I won't talk about it on on the stream, but it's it's funny. I'll I'll, I'll tell you about it next time yeah. we're in person. Uh, Grains Club says, uh, "Coffee, can you just a little something from your intro speech tonight?" My intro speech, or your I guess you are at the Hex Conference happening in, in forty minutes or so. I guess you are one of the first ones to talk. So maybe you're giving a speech. Or am I giving sure. an intro speech, or am I giving a panel? I thought I was on a panel. Are you the first one to speak on the panel, which counts as an intro speech? I don't know. Um, hold on. Now I got to look this up. <laughs> I got to look it up right now. Sorry, I put you in scheduling hell. I know we've, we've went back and forth a few times. Jesus, man. <laughs> so many things. Why do people mm -hmm. want me so much? Just kidding. Uh, panel one. Yeah, panel one. It's like uh, four people at a time. I mean, it's called a panel. Right, day one, Friday, yeah. So it's not an intro. Sounds like an speech. intro speech to me. <laughs> Look, I can. I, I'm giving you the intro speech right now. This is the this is the pregame for the uh, for the conference. Shout out to Maddie. We are we're warming coffee up for you to give his speech. Uh, maybe. Yeah, you already got um, all my good stuff out of me. I don't have anything left. 
trying to get a few, I don't want to wear you out too much, but also I, I think, uh, I think your, your brain can function for a while. I think you, I think you have the capacity. Uh, Jerex will make your hex stats 3.69 to Amber. Ooh, that's cool. That's a that cool idea. Cool. Actually 3.69 mm -hmm. inches. Like to have, have some sacred geometry. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Like the, if you can make the hexagon, even some, somehow work out to be that like, to, uh, ooh, I don't know, we're getting some like, can your, can your tattoo artist be like also like a math major where he just makes everything super like, like uh hexagonal, like uh, that, that'd be cool. I'd like to see that. I, yeah, maybe, man. I love geometry. Geometry made so much sense to me. I don't know why. That was one of my favorite classes too, actually. Not, yeah. I wasn't, uh, I wasn't the best at math, but I, I had a great geometry teacher. So that helps. Uh, oh, I was going to ask too. So speaking of the Hex Conference, Richard is speaking Monday, I believe. Um, so do you think, do you think we'll hear anything other than nothing burger status updates? Like, do you think, uh, Testnet v3, if I dare. Like, are you expecting anything to hear anything this weekend? Look, man, I um, I don't trade, but there's probably some of you guys out there that want to play this like a like a trading game. Um, I don't even think it's really that. I think I really, really think the latest hex pump is simply based on low liquidity, flushing out a few big whales, and giving everybody the confidence back that Pulse Chain is actively being worked on. Because there was some kind of weird mind virus that was going around that like Pulse Chain was not even, you know, the developer. I don't, you know, people just make shit up on the internet. Rich has been so, gaslighting us for like 18 months or something. What yeah. is gaslighting though? Like, what does that mean? That's when you like, go ahead. Yeah. What, what gaslighting? Actually, let me give you a good definition. I kind of said that. <laughs> off I don't think that's gaslighting. I think you're meant ghosting. It's sort of, but I think, let's see, gaslighting using psychological means and questioning. Their, no, that's actually not the right one. It's like you, a you, uh, you, you accuse somebody of something that you are, you, oh, yourself okay. are doing. gaslighting, emotional abuse that makes people think they're it's like when you're abusing so somebody and you say, stop crying, you're being irrational, you know, that's gaslighting. Well, maybe yeah, I get, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like Richard's saying like, Hey, like, like stop worrying about it. I'm working on it, but he's actually not doing it. So maybe it's like a combination of gaslighting and like a ghosting. Maybe. Stop fucking gaslighting. Grow up guys. <laughs> Seriously. Like yeah. be an adult, like. Everyone likes to throw that word around too in the modern culture too. Like, oh, I'm gaslighting. It's like there is a real gaslighting thing. It's fucked up when somebody abuses the, their victim and then they blame the victim after they, you know, they blame the victim for being abused. Richard's not doing anything. Okay. He's trying to build Paul Shane in peace. You guys keep bothering him. Stop, stop bothering him. Stop making up stories. Like what's the, what's the likelihood of like everything being faked? gaslighting ghosting like whatever you like what, like that whole crazy conspiracy scenario happening or him actually working on it and devs are doing stuff and we just need to wait like Look, it's shouldn't, you, be, more likely. shouldn't you not want your founder to be tweeting and streaming all the time shouldn't you want your founder to be working on the thing that he's building like stop trying to distract him and stop just stop making up bullshit i mean for your own sake i don't know what kind of stories are going around i don't pay attention to it i i spend pretty i mean I probably spend an hour a day on Twitter, maybe two sometimes. And uh, I filter it out to be only people that serve my interests, you know, or people that I can learn from, even if they don't agree with me on everything. If they can show me a different perspective and they're not just an energy vampire. Um, that's what my feed looks like. And I recommend everybody use use that mute button very liberally if you can. Yes, the mute button is fantastic. It's very passive and it's undoable. And uh, give you a break from people if you if you don't want to hear. I just want to keep saying gaslighting as many times as I can just to trigger coffee. Uh, <laughs> but Golki, credible source told me Aris is dropping a sex tape. Are you gaslighting? Like gaslight are you gaslighting us right now. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think there's like an oh, overuse of people using these these trendy words. Um, I don't think I've ever said that word in real life like until today for. Oh, I'm not calling you out. I'm, I'm just, yeah, yeah. I, I know. I'm just like, I'm thinking you, could, yeah. you said that I'm like, that's true. Like, I don't ever remember saying it, but I hear people say it all the time. Yeah. You hear media. people say it. It's just like um, using the word like narcissist and bipolar. It's like everyone's labeling everyone as a narcissist now, just be, when they don't yeah. like agree with each other. Um, and there is like narcissistic personality disorder, but you know, you, you need to just, you know, pe these labels, I think sometimes go too far. And uh, yeah. Black Eagle said the gas, all the gaslighting is proving the dead internet theory. I want to, I want to talk about that. Has anybody heard, have you heard about the dead internet theory? I have not. Please. Dude. Okay. So the dead internet theory is basically like 
the theory, the hypothesis that there could be, we all know there's bots on Twitter, right? But what if there were right. so many bots that they made up 90% of all of the interactions on the internet? Like a lot of the people that we're talking to on Twitter could be bots. And you see that too. You see it on Twitter. You see like you see these idiots just engaging with anime profile picture bots on Twitter that probably are designed to enrage them just to, to farm for engagement. Um, but the question is like, it's if you ask Twitter, how many bots do you have in proportion to relative users? They're going to tell you, Oh, probably like 10% bots and 90% real. Right. But how could they know like th their methods of knowing? So it's skepticism over, the way of calculating bots is really unknown, whether it's Facebook or Instagram or Twitter or even YouTube. How many of these users are real users? Well, especially when they behave and act like real users, especially as AI gets better, it becomes harder and harder to discern how many real bots there are. So the dead internet theory is that for a long time now, um, the, the number of real users on the internet has been a lot lower than the, uh, than the um, reported numbers. So well, I, would say, I would say one way to, to be able to figure out like how true it is. I mean, probably a big portion of it's true, but like commerce, for example, like there's, you know, do robots use credit cards? Now, if they do, and they do really small transactions, that'd be a crazy like conspiracy too. But I guess you could calculate how much like e-commerce transactions they are from unique credit cards and stuff, and then see like some kind of numbers from that. But uh I don't know, like how, I guess, I guess it, maybe it's not like, is it true or not true? Maybe it's a spectrum of like how true it is, right? Yeah, um, it, it's definitely a spectrum, right? It's like, is it 10 How dead bots? is the internet? How dead is the internet? Yeah, and uh, yeah, I'm just, let's see, I'm reading about it right now, you know, because it, it's funny, I mean- You're you safe, can... Black Eagle, you're safe. <laughs> yeah, so- uh, Content is no longer king. Context is the ruler of the junk. Basically, this just uh, this just needs to go back to the point that you know filtration of information is going to be your your number one tool when you're navigating the digital world in the next couple of decades. Here, you, you can't just read everything and react to it. You have to really use your your frontal lobe there. Gold Key says he fully believes. That's interesting. I I would you know it's easy to believe in certain on certain platforms. Um, but, you know, typically the people I follow on Twitter, right, those are people that I'm pretty darn sure are not bots, right? So I think you can still find the real people, but it's almost like, it's almost an analogy to like the simulation theory, right? People say, well, if there's simulation, if there's a simulation, then how many characters are just NPCs, right? Like, mm. is it possible to have an NPC of just these guys that are just going through the motions, going through the rat race and all that? It almost... The more advanced that computers get, the more metaphors that we have to relate um, computers to real life. Like our, our um, brain's processing power is similar to RAM. Our hippocampus, our memory is similar to like the hard drive storage space. Um, the, it, gets, it becomes more evident that we probably are in a simulation and we're probably not in the first one either. Like we're probably somewhere layered deep within a whole multiverse of simulations. And if that's true, how many bots do we talk to every day? You know what I mean? Like, and what, what is a yeah. bot? Are, are there people that have more or less consciousness that, and, but then that gets weird because you don't want to get into like labeling people as an NPC. Right? Everybody has a consciousness. Everybody has a soul. Everybody is a human being. But um, I do think that you can be more or less conscious as a human being, but you also have a choice. Mm -hmm. You also have a choice to be, someone that's a free thinker, someone that's even a thought leader, or you could some, just be someone that sits around and watches the news all day and watches Netflix and believes all the lies on the media. And like, that's your life. And like, you know, whatever you get it, you go, go to your job, you go home. And I don't know, man, it's trippy to think about. Gold Key says crazy that Elon Musk is a founder of open AI who made chat GPT and now owns Twitter. Gold Key, what's even crazier is that he invented PayPal, which was supposed to be Bitcoin. I think this man is just ahead of everything. He's on the cusp of figuring out what's coming in the uh, in the physical and digital world. Makes yeah, great cars too. Great cars. I've got one. It's fucking fabulous. Ooh, nice. Yeah. Which, which model? The S. Nice. S for sexy. That's what S Elon meant. meant uh, he made that right. S three X Y. That's S three X Y. Mm-hmm. 
Gold, well, Goldie also says he's anti-Christ. So Uh-oh. There's, <laughs> there's that as well. There's I was that. like, I got to stop you right there, Goldie. Oh, he was kidding. He was kidding. <laughs> Uh, Jerry asked, "Do you think we went to the moon? We went to the moon. What do you think? Oh, it's getting very conspiratorial. What uh, do you think? I, I mean, I, I, my response is kind of like um, my response to the uh, to the simulation question. My response to is the internet dead or, or full bots is like, how much does it matter to me? And how, what would I would it would it make me more or less productive and effective believing that it was true and trying to like spend time on that?" And the answer is, I just don't care enough to even know because it's just going to slow me down. So unless it's in my path of conquering, like, why would I, why would I care about it? Unless it's affecting me in some way. So, I like that. That's, it's very based of you. However, I, I've looked into this No, but like, I, however, I, let me tell you, what, <laughs> let me tell you why tonight. No. So like, I love conspiracy theories, man. I love them. I, they're, they're so uh, entertaining and I have to agree with you. Like it doesn't change my life at the end of the day, whether or not we went there and picked up a few rocks and came back or whether or not we lied about it to beat the Soviets in the space race. I think what's likely is that um, a lot of the fo- the f- footage, a lot of the camera footage is visibly like drawn over or faked and they didn't have Photoshop back then. So like there's, uh, there's very obvious evidence of tampering with some of the initial photographs and uh, you know, potentially videos even. And mm-hmm. I think that maybe, you know, photos and videos that they tried to take could could have had issues with the film being burned and the x-rays of the atmosphere and stuff like that. Um, X-rays really do mess with, uh, x-ray radiation messes with um, film and other things like that. It definitely messes with Polaroid film. But I mean, this was the 60s, right? This was the 60s. And we were trying our best to reach the Soviets and we did have radio technology back then. And I believe that we did actually land on the moon. And I believe that those live radio feeds and the whole buzz, all like one small step for man, uh, one giant leap for mankind. I think that was probably real, but there might've been some, some fuckery in order to make it look even more real to prove like, Oh crap, we don't have any pictures. We got to make some pictures, right? Because we got to prove that we beat the Russians. Uh, now why hasn't anyone gone back is the really interesting question, right? You've got, You know, a lot of people, you know, one, a couple of astronauts that have been to the moon reported, you know, a ringing sound when they got there. Um, Why, why have we never photographed the dark side of the moon? Have we photographed the dark side of the moon, but, you know, um, are hiding something like that? Like one astronaut even reported seeing a UFO and it's not an alien, but an unidentified object, you know, what, you know, in travel to the moon. I don't know whether or not he was on the moon. Um, So I, I, I tend to be more conspiratorial about the reasons we haven't gone back and maybe that there is something up there that uh, is hidden, is hidden from public knowledge. Now don't waste your time thinking about it. I just, I find that that's like my entertainment. You know what I mean? You but, don't watch uh, cops. So you got to watch this. So there you yeah. Go. Look, <laughs> you can, exactly. <laughs> like uh, when I'm not watching cops, I'm watching the, uh, I'm watching YouTube videos about conspiracy theories. Dude, um, speaking of moons, well, you know, I mean, I know I saw moons, but I do want to ask, um, <clears throat> when pull chain launches, when we don't know when, but when it does, do you think there'll be, you know, just, just going back to just to lightly touch on the community and, you know, them fields and all that stuff. Do you think we'll have some sort of revival, like in the community when pull chain launches? I mean, there's so much capital getting unlocked. Just like what fifty to hundred different SAC uh, projects that had SAC phases, like all that, like outside of Pulse Chain and Pulse Sac sacrifice, there's all kinds of other money and other projects too that is not going to get unlocked, or maybe not only half of it's going to get unlocked until we, you know, actually launch another chain. We have those coins and stuff. Is there like a supernova coming for crypto when this thing happens, or is it kind of like eh, kind of a whimper? Like I, I don't know. What, what do I think it's, I think it's going to be an absolute nuclear blast. You know, like I think. Pulse chain could easily kick off the next bull market. That's the only thing going on. Yeah, great segue. That's the only thing going on right now. It's the only thing people care about right now. Everybody else is defeated. All the Solana boys got wrecked. All the Celsius guys got wrecked. How many other communities are out there? Dogecoin, eh. They were they were never really as big as as we were. Um, Bitcoin, they're Shoot cannibalizing around. themselves. Bitcoin's cannibalizing themselves. They they're never going to get the gains we're going to get. Um, Ethereum, everyone branches off to do their own DeFi projects, so they're kind of splintered. You don't really have any other 
focused community like the Hex and Pulse Chain community and and everyone's starting to take notice. Big influencers have have actually provably sacrificed for Pulse Chain. They don't want to talk about it yet because they're the kinds of guys that like to dump on your heads after they pump it. And they also have the whole, oh, you know, being afraid of the going against the mainstream crypto narrative, which is like, oh, it's cool to hate Richard. So I'm going to hate Richard for now. But hmm. I, Pulse Chain, though, I like Pulse Chain a little bit. Maybe that Richard's not so bad. It's going to be the turning of the tides, like mentally for uh, the, the wave of consciousness in the crypto community to eventually say, hey, Richard's actually not a scammer. And I think a lot of these millions of dollars of stable coins that are currently on the sidelines, when Pulse Chain launches, I mean, it's going to be the only game in town. I think a lot of these stable coins are going to flow into not only Pulse Chain, but obviously the whole Richard Hart ecosystem and, and even the whole Pulse Chain ecosystem. All these you know, 100 or 200 projects on Pulse Chain, a lot of money is going to flow into all of them and they're all going to pump. And I think it could easily spur the next bull cycle because it's going to be the only game in town. It's the only thing interesting going on. And uh, I think it's going to be huge, but hey, I don't think it's going to be a whimper. I would, I would hate to be wrong on that too. So don't, if I'm wrong, I'm just guessing. Okay, guys. Where do you want the tattoo if you're wrong? Where do you want it? <laughs> if I'm wrong. Well, if I'm wrong, yeah. I might not be getting the tattoo because Hex might not be going to $1, right? <laughs> if I'm wrong, you may never see me again. Uh, no, yeah, please, yeah. please don't be wrong. And, and, and if you are, you can, you can be right again. You can make up for it. Don't worry. We, we, we need you coffee. We need you around. We need to be caffeinated. That's right. You guys don't need me, by the way. Though. That's another thing, too. Uh, hey, you're the critical entrepreneur effort in this whole ecosystem. Hey, okay? how dare so. you? How dare you? <laughs> As he, he didn't mean that. As you yeah. see. No, I mean, I mean, he's not. I meant you're not the critical. <laughs> this, fuck, fuck, fuck. Um, the I, was, I, was thinking of the, <laughs> I was thinking of something, too, about... I mean, test that. I don't know what we can. I just I keep going back to the community. I keep going back to the feelings and just, you know, if this is the bottom, if this is the bottom and you're sitting there thinking, what can I do to make it through 2023? Like it 2023, you know, full chain launches, maybe we'll get a mini bear or sorry, not a mini bear a mini bull run uh, in the RH ecosystem. Maybe it goes on the crypto in general. Maybe it just like proliferates in the whole, whole ecosystem. Um, but just getting through 2023, let's say maybe it's just a sideways year. 2024 is where the real action happens. You know, that's a lot of speculation around that. What is it just learning? Is it just controlling yourself? Is it just staking? I mean, what do you, what do you roll your money into? Like what, how do you not watch? How do you not watch your money for during a cycle when not a lot's happening as far as price go up? I mean, better hobby than watching your money is making money. So yeah, working bear, retiring bull. Yeah, just uh, you know, find something that makes you money, grind it out. It's not going to be fun, but imagine working until you're 60, 70, 80. or imagine being able, like it sounds all, less fun. All you young guys out there, you know, and I, I'm look if you're older as well, you're never too late. You're literally never too late, but I've got a lot of friends around my age and, and a lot of, you know, what I tell them is, look, man, like, would you rather retire at 35, maybe 36, you know, maybe like, or would you rather work your whole life and doing something you hate until you die? Um, but that, that, that again, like people that are older, younger, it doesn't matter. I think we can all move into providing value and getting paid for something that we actually enjoy doing eventually. I didn't realize that, that early on. Sorry. Is that what you focus on? Is that what I, I yeah, maybe, maybe some of your mindset too. Like if you say, for example, if your goal is to retire early and just, you know, own your own time and do what you want, is that your central, like, is everything revolved from that? It's like you start with that and then everything you do leads up to that. And how, how does that, I don't know. I, I think just, it's hard to stay focused. And that's, that's what a lot of people are looking for, like a way to stay focused or have good distractions. But how do you, let's say, you can't stand to distract yourself. You just keep thinking about all this stuff. How do you stay focused enough to like compound in the right direction and not, you know, screw yourself over, merch in stake, all that stuff? Dude, I'm not like a psychologist. Like I don't have like the ant I don't have all the answers. Well, what do you do, I guess? Like what 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 is how do you stay focused? Is it just streaming? Is it just like staying in the community? Like what what makes you not, you know, screw up? You just decide to think a certain way. Like you literally just get out of bed and choose to be 
positive instead of negative. Like just decide to choose an alternative reality that suits your your goals and aspirations. Obviously, it's not like the secret, right? You can't just hope around and wish and pray all day and good things are going to come come right in your lap. But if you just behave as if you're kind of already there and, and don't place so much importance on the destination, right? It's about the journey. You have to enjoy the journey. Um, the more importance you place on a particular goal, the actually the, the more you distance yourself from that goal. The more angry you get, the more importance you place in Richard Hart acting the way you think he should act, the more depressed you're going to be when he doesn't act the way you think he should act. So rather than trying to control other people, control your own self and control the alternative space of, the, of possibilities that you want to transverse in your own life. Like you just wake out of bed and you choose, right? You don't, I don't really don't believe life is like deterministic, right? We're not born into a certain way. I mean, yeah, you might be born with a shit roll the dice you know you might have a bad a bad hand but you can always play your cards to the best you can and um, just just try to choose like ask yourself you know is this my behaving am i choosing the current actions that somebody you know future me what what, who i want to be would be acting like if i'm not acting like that like i gotta change my actions just choose choose to behave differently and it's like not that hard i mean if you're really in a rut and you don't like the way your brain works, try psychedelics. Hmm. It's a, uh, try mushrooms. <laughs> advocation for psychedelics. Okay. Yeah. I mean, look, I don't know. I mean, like, if you really, really don't like the way your brain, like if you feel like you're so far in this loop, like there's a lot of really good research out there. There's a lot of promising you know, if you have mental, like, obviously maybe you want to do it with a therapist. Maybe you'd want to do it in Washington state or Oregon where they've legalized and decriminalized a lot of these things, but there's a lot of up and coming therapeutic benefits of MDMA, Mm -hmm. psychedelic mushrooms, LSD, not saying everybody should go do that, but you know, you're, you're kind of asking me like, how does somebody get out of this, this negative mindset if you really, really are stuck. And like, if, if, if you're not able to get like, if you've tried everything else and nothing else works, maybe try that. Yeah, no, I, I was just thinking the different angles of, you know, like you know, medication, uh, therapy, just setting up a, you know, a, a schedule and a routine that gets you into something like, like everything is hard to do until you do it 50 times. And you're like, oh, this is easy now. Like, I, I, yeah, like you wanna, if, you, if you want to do something like, for example, take a run, take a run every morning. And I wouldn't take a run every morning unless I did. I like, it's like self-reinforcing. Like I do it. So if I don't do it, I feel like I'm missing something. I feel like, no, I, sh- I should have did that. Just like brushing your teeth. So um, yeah, a lot of different ways to, I, I just think that's something that people are missing. I keep seeing this. I keep seeing this desire for something different than what you have, but then like the no accountability and no, nobody wants to put themselves in the right position to do it. Nobody wants to do the work and, and have the discipline and like change the way you know, change yourself before you try to change the world, that type of thing. Nobody wants to do that part. They just want like, yeah. give me, you know, give me the solution. Like, tell me what to do and I'll do Look, it. Man, it's like no, no pain, no gain, right? No, no mud, no mm-hmm. Lotus. You need to get uncomfortable and get comfortable with being uncomfortable. Black Eagles just said, go fishing. Fuck. LOL. <laughs> yeah. Just not, like, just chill yeah. out. Whatever, whatever dude thing you like, if you want to play golf or whatever, um, you know, it's, it's hard, but uh, I, I think we've really like maybe maybe society has been too coddled into thinking that everything should just be OK. I mean, we've we've lived in these times of abundance my whole entire life. I'm still living in, you know, it, relative to somebody that lives in Africa. I have a great, fabulous life. Um, yeah. You know, I the, the, the coddling of the American mind is great. Look, Jonathan uh, Haidt. Yeah, right there. yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's, it's not only, it's like a lot of first world countries, right? Not just Americans, but uh, I think a lot of it starts from the culture center of LA and Hollywood and all that stuff, like California, which is a beautiful place. I love California, but um, there's a lot of just these woke, like, I'm not like, I don't want to get like anti-woke or anything, but there's a lot of just these like prescribed ideas that you have to think a certain way or be on a certain team and you know, unhealthy the, ideas yeah like ideas of like handouts and welfare and everybody should just get a handout for doing nothing it's like we all have to pull our weight in society like we as a species didn't survive by sitting around and being lazy and just hoping that somebody else would would give us a paycheck right we didn't survive by 
you know, hiding or not taking risk. You need to get out there. And yes, yeah, sometimes, you know, some, some, someone's going to go take a risk and get eaten by a bear. Like someone's going to start a business and they're going to lose a million dollars. I've lost that much money <laughs> a couple of times. Um, it's not fun, you know, but it's, it's not like, what else are we going to do? Right. Like, well, I think, I think it's inspiring, man. Like when you hear, like when you hear stuff like, you know, you, you've lost money in businesses, you know, I've lost money on investments and all these things. When you see people around you that maybe as streamers or people you like, or people that you just listen to a lot. And you, I mean, just even when I mentioned earlier, Naval, you know, Richard, uh, Alex and Mosey, all these people, when I see all their stories, all these like super famous people that are super rich right now, most of them at least, they have all these failures. They have all these times yeah. that they just lost everything and they bounce back. So that's like, yeah. if you want inspiration, just look around. There's all kinds of people with stories that started probably in, in worse places than you did. And now they're, they're, uh, they got everything they want. Yeah. Don't follow the regularly scheduled programming, whether it's the right or the left, whether it's the woke or the whatever crap they're feeding you. Just really, really try to decide what, what do you think? People that want to be handheld and fed all day, those are the type of people that society is going to leave behind. It's kind of like, you know, in the ancient tribal days, I mean, this is going to sound terrible, but like if you if you lost a leg or something, like they, they, they leave you behind and kill you. And now obviously we've came so far that that doesn't need to happen anymore. We can take care of our, you know, disabled in a lot of different ways, but like the people that are- We asked everyone 70%, we could do so many good things. So many good things. <laughs> What'd you say? We just tax everyone like 70%. We could, like, yeah, we could yeah, solve yeah. everything. Could yeah, solve everything. yeah. Because the government knows what's best with our tax money. Why are you so greedy? That's yeah. my question. <laughs> Cause, yeah. Because they're, yeah. These people calling for more taxes don't realize that it's funding the military industrial complex anyway. Um, at best. At best, it's funding that. At worst, best. it's funding every other initiative that you don't agree with. They're making angry tweets on their iPhone that's made from slaves and cobalt mines. But, uh, <laughs> Yeah, but they're fixing. It's they're part of the wrong. solution, man. <laughs> Listen, you're not wrong. Yeah. So we're January 6th. I just I hear that. And now it's a special date in my mind for some reason, uh, thanks to whatever happened a couple of years ago. But uh, what beginning of the year, what, what, do you, what do you want to do this year? Like, what are your plans? Like, what do you what do you hope to accomplish this year that you, you personally uh, in this ecosystem in life? Like, what, what do you got going on? Um, I want to finish the version two of the course that I built. Um, I can't do that until Paul Strain launches, but I want to do whatever <laughs> I can right now. I want to keep onboarding people. I want to grow my YouTube numbers. I want to grow my Patreon subscribers and I want to grow my uh, YouTube subscribers, obviously. Um, I just want to increase my, my, my revenue streams and I want to obviously do that by helping people. So if you found this valuable, if you find anything I say valuable, consider my Patreon 20 bucks a month. You get full access to me. <laughs> wanna like if you want, if if talking to me and hanging out with me is something you might want to do, twenty bucks a month. Because <laughs> I've only got so much attention. Well, how you sell it is like you know what? If you want to hang out with me, twenty bucks a month. <laughs> Patreon booth. No, I mean, I mean, or go to a real life meetup. Go to a real life meetup. We can hang out for yeah. free, you know, or whatever the cost it takes to. I mean, to get there. You but can like, give coffee twenty bucks at the meetup if you want, but it's not required. <laughs> not required. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, no, I mean so a lot what, of people what, have questions out there, and I, I can't help everybody. Like, there's only 24 hours in a day. But if you want some some crypto non financial advice, you know, if you want to figure things out a little bit better, get a better grasp on crypto, my Patreon got a private chat room, um, one on one attention, questions answered. Sometimes you know, private calls or whatever. I really think it's a lot of bang for your buck, and that's about as many people as I can help one on one. Other than that, I think the best way for me to continue to provide value is go to one to many on YouTube, right? I can make one YouTube video and help 10,000 people. If, you know, let's say it gets 10,000 views. Then I just reach 10,000 people. But the the one-on-one -on -one course or the one-on-one -on -one, uh, Patreon group, that maxes out at probably about 200 people. I don't think I really have the mental bandwidth for more than 200 people in that group. So yeah. there's only 20 people or like there's only 15 people in that group right now. So when the bull market comes back, it's probably going to get capped off at around 200. What, what do you think in terms of, uh, do you have any more ideas for, I, I know you did the, uh, the buying groceries thing and for onboarding and a lot of, like, that's one of the things I love about some of the stuff you do is you really try to find these nuggets of, wow, I think this will be, you know, a good impact. I think this can help the ecosystem. I think this can onboard people. And then you go and do it. You don't just think about it. You just don't write it down and say, Oh, well, maybe we'll talk about it. Like you go and actually do those things. And that's why 
you know, I, I think your Patreon and other places uh, where you can get people's time and attention and, and funding, like you're one of the few people who actually do something good with that funding too uh, for the community. Do you yeah. have any other things planned like, like this year? Like, are you going to go, you know, go to Home Depot and start like helping people like fix their house and like hex.com, save yourself. Like <laughs> what, do you, what do you got, what do you got going no, on? No, man. You know, I really think uh, as long as the bear market's in play, as long as I'm waiting for pulse chain, I'm going to go kind of uh, monk mode. I'm going to go kind of Zen, Zen Buddhist mode. And I'm just going to try to be simple. Try not to drink, uh, try not to drink that much. I'm not going to say abs, you know, abstinence or anything, but uh, yeah. try not, you know, try to eat healthy, try to spend as little money as I need to spend and um, just see what comes to mind. I, I think like when you silence the mind, that's when a lot of, that's when a lot of my better ideas come is when I'm just, when I'm in the shower, for example, or when I'm in a long car ride with, uh, with no internet, right? Like I just start thinking about stuff and it all starts coming together. So just trying to silence the mind a little bit more, trying to see where I can continue to add value. I, I think what I'm, I'm just going to continue what I'm doing now, right? YouTube videos, evergreen content, live stream, AMAs, Patreon, work on the course, I mean, from a communication standpoint, this is how I think I can onboard the most people effectively. I, uh, other people have their own crazy cool ideas. Like, um, you know, uh, everyone's doing it a little bit differently. Some people are yeah. taking like, I mean, I don't know. Some people do conferences. Look at Matty Allen. He's, he's leading a conference. I think that's fabulous. That's absolutely fantastic. But well, shout um, out to Furu Finance for TikTok. He's been killing it on like promoting shorts and doing TikTok videos and getting in the places where you get easy engagement, all that stuff. So TikTok and videos. shorts. Yep. TikTok and shorts, I think, are a good funnel. Um, funnel for people's other channels, right? Like, because people start to really get acquainted with you by that repetition of all those 15 seconds over and over. Like, you're basically just right. getting plastered on TikTok all day long with people's personalities. And so it's a great funnel um i kind of don't like i mean i could do more with tiktok and shorts maybe i should um there comes a point where i think i might need to hire a guy to do those but you know i was actually thinking too like i thought about this the other day i was like what if i just ask for a business partner the business partner can do all the youtube shorts all the tiktok shorts a little bit of video editing but it would more just be like an unpaid internship no, it'd be like an unpaid, like, what do you think about this? Like an unpaid partnership where I choose somebody to work with, you know, so I'm just a team of two people and we just both try to make money together. The same routes I'm doing now, plus whatever they want to do that, that meshes together with the whole crypto coffee brand, you know, under the same umbrella. And then we just try to get this up to like, you know, generating 20,000, 30,000 a month. And we split all the revenue 50, 50. Right. Yeah. I think, I think as long as you align the incentives, that's the important part. Like they, whatever they do is going to make you both more money, uh, whether right. it's a revenue split. Um, you know, like I think the, getting the incentives aligned is, is the right part, but, and then finding yeah. somebody you trust and will, yeah. you know, yeah. heavily motivated. No, you're right. Yeah. I think if anybody would have like-minded ideals, it, I'd be able to find that person in the hex community. Right. But yeah. It'd be hard. It's not, it's not like a cash grab, right? Like I'm, I'm not offering like a salary. I'm thinking about like partnering with one guy that I could just like hang out with and like almost be like, you know, just friends, right? Like I want to just have like a buddy to do all this with, you know what I mean? That like also happens to be a great editor, also happens to be good at online social media monetization, you know, just have, has all the skills that like I need to find someone to complement my skill set with uh, more of like maybe a behind the scenes type of role. I don't know. I'm not in a rush to do that, but I think if I ever did find someone like that, I would, uh, I would propose that. Yeah. I mean, anyone out there listening to, if you, if you, uh, you know, coffee fitting out there, if you are trustworthy, Hexican and in the community and want to do some good stuff and, and help uh, any your video editing and, and like, good on the media side I mean, you like good media producers and stuff yeah let him know because uh he uh he, he's looking for a friend like a, a business friend a business uh, partner i guess you could call it yeah. <laughs> you're both heavily incentivized to go, do good work and uh and make beautiful music and grow the grow the brand grow the channel i mean that's business buddy that's <laughs> a bb uh so many different directions right, we can take that one. Yeah, yeah. We, I need to get you off because uh, the Hex Conference is starting. Last one before you go real quick. 
What is the first thing you're going to do when Pulse Chain launches? 10 seconds. When Pulse Chain launches, the first thing I'm going to do is get to my computer and start making tutorial videos. <laughs> Spoken like a true uh, influencer creator, uh, man of many talents, Crypto Coffee, everyone. Uh, appreciate you joining me, man. I, uh, yeah. I definitely, yeah. And I'm going to come on your show next time. I promise. Like, let me know when you want to stream again. I will come on and you can, you can, uh, you can ask all the questions and we'll have some fun. I'm laughing right now at my, someone just called me out for talking high. Like I just took the most roundabout way to, to describe a business partner. <laughs> That's not good. I mean, dude, I, somebody That's like, hilarious. A business partner. Yeah. yeah. Yes. No. Yes. That. No. I'd rather, I'd rather you speak from the heart than speak from, you know, some fake language that, that nobody, you know, nobody can connect with. So yeah. Well, You're thanks for having me on, man. I really appreciate it. Of course. Of course. Everyone uh, come back on Monday or so. We'll have another stream. We've got a bunch of streams next week. Uh, but yeah, go like, subscribe, Crypto Coffee 369 on Twitter, Crypto Coffee YouTube channel, uh, Patreon. He's got all the links uh, as well on there. You got a website, oh, hexpassiveincome.com. Uh, go do all the things, smash all the buttons, and go to the Hex Conference. It's happening right now. See y'all later.